Welcome back to the Math Mastery Series, Navigating Success at Oakland Community College. My name is Julie Gunkelman, and I have been talking to you in this series about these two books, Teach Your Students How to Learn and Teach Yourself to Learn by um, McGuire. The motivation for this whole video series is that eventually the I do, we do, you do method of learning math will fail. It always does. It did even for me, um, and I was an undergrad in college at the time. This video is talking about the um, notes and uh, homework, and I'm going to start with notes. So McGuire talks a lot in the book about how you want to handwrite your notes. Um, there is some science that, that links that physical act of writing does help you encode that information in your brain. Um, I don't see many people trying to type in math. Um, it's re really way too hard with all the symbols and the language that I can't imagine that even trying to be effective. But what I do see sometimes is that people want the instructor's notes or they want someone else's notes in the class and they don't want to take notes themselves. That's not going to help, right? You want to actually write them out yourself. Um, now, if you had the luxury of taking your notes because of by a video, right? That's the delivery content or the, the way that the content is delivered. Um, you want to stop and make your flashcards along the way. If you're in a live lecture, you can always just put a, pull a, a pad of sticky notes out with you and, and have that available so that you know to come back to that particular thing. Maybe it's to write down a formula. Maybe it's to write down some kind of a term. Um, maybe it is to write down an identity or a derivative rule, something like that. You want to come back to that. So if you're taking live notes, right, you're going to want to uh, come back to those things. Um, if you're taking video no or notes with the video again, you've got time to fill in your outline or your concept map, whatever is best for you. Remembering those buckets that we had, those buckets of information that we did from the previewing, right? And so you can kind of fill that in as you come to it and um, it'll help you make more sense of it instead of trying to take all your notes and then going back to do that. Again, if you're doing a live lecture, that's okay. Just put a sticky note by it, some kind of indication that you want to come back. Don't forget to jot down questions along the way, maybe things that you're not clear about, or um, also, you know, what kind of questions you might have on the exam, right? Start writing those down right now. Start thinking about it. What would my instructor possibly ask me about this content? And then don't forget to try the example problems. Um, if you're doing a video, stop the video. Don't just listen to the instructor do the problem. If you're in class, you want to try the problem, of course. You don't want to just sit there and wait for the instructor to, uh, to give you that answer. If you are um, experiencing live lecture, um, that's okay. You can't do some of these things along the way, but you want to do it as soon as possible after that live lecture. So um, research shows that if you wait 24 hours, it's way too late. You, you, you forget so much information. If you can, I would do it immediately after the class. That would be my best advice. Um, if you can't do it right then, try to do it as soon as, soon as possible. Don't wait um, and take care of that. Fill in those things along the way because because it's going to be so much easier for you if you do it immediately. Okay, homework, we got to talk, right? So in this video series and in the books, McGuire has been talking a lot about um, Bloom's taxonomy and how important it is. We've been focusing on the creating, evaluating, and analyzing, right? It's kind of at the top of the way I have the Bloom's um, presented here. And in this, in, this, um, in this instance, we're going to be talking a little bit more about applying, understanding, and remembering in terms of, hey, we're going to actually do some problems in our homework, right? Um, don't forget about this stuff though at the top, right? It's still important. You still want to talk about how problems relate to each other. Can you categorize them? How are they different? What might we ask you? What can we maybe do with this next? Um, that thinking about what's coming next um, kind of does help you uh, think about the, um, the topic better and will help you uh, learn better as well. In my intro video, I had this slide that had all of these problem solving apps for you. Um, McGuire talks in the book a lot about how you want to uh, not use solved examples. Well, apps are even worse. They're solving the problem for you, right? You're not even trying to mimic a solved example. So uh, all you really learn if you use these apps is, is how to, well, you probably already know how to take a picture, right? But you know how to scan the problem and then have it spit the answer out for you. And you're not going to have that on the exam, so you need to stop. Stop using these apps. Stop relying on them to try that mimicking of the I do, we do, you do. Stop. Just stop. Um, I want you to use your textbook effectively. In the textbook video, I said that you want to try, try to use this as a, 
um, you know, resource for problems. And I want you to do problems in the book before attempting the online homework. Now, in my classes, for my STEM classes, I do give a list of problems from the book that I suggest that people do. But if your instructor doesn't do that, who cares? You still have a bunch of problems in the book that you can go ahead and look at and do, right? They are there for you. I'm going to go back to that um, transformations lesson that I talked about in, in the last few videos. And here are the exercises that go with it. And I just wanted you to see what they look like. You know, I've got numbers one and two. It's a little bit more of a uh, description. It says for number one, it says when examining the formula of a function that's a result of multiple transformations, how can you distinguish between a horizontal shift and a vertical shift, right? Um, then we go into um, using a point and doing some transformations. And then finally, we get to graphing and doing some transformations. Okay. I create an example of what I saw a lot of in homework that I looked at from my students this semester. So I, I don't know what section this is from. I don't know what the content is. I don't know what the questions are. All I have written down are some answers, right? And students would tell me, oh, I did this, but I did it on scrap paper, right? Because they're doing it for their online homework and they think that that's the, the game, right? Like I'm just trying to find the answer and I'm moving on. But I'm here to tell you today that I want you to practice the problems the way that you would write them on an exam, right? If you were practicing for... A, or practicing is probably the wrong thing, I should say training. If you were training for a running race, right, or a bicycle race or something like that, would you just watch other people do it and expect to be able to be awesome at it? No, you actually have to practice the task, right? The running, the biking, the whatever it is. And so when you are doing homework, I want you to think of it as I'm practicing for this exam every time. I don't care if it's from the book or if it's from online uh, online uh, homework system, right? So here's my good example. I have the section. I've got the content. I know this is about transformations. You see, I wrote the question out and I did the work in a different color. Um, some of my students this last semester found this helpful because they could distinguish between the question and the answer when they went back to review their homework. And yes, you do want to go back and review your homework, right? You want to see what you did um, for sure. Um, some of my students, when they got something wrong, which I didn't put this in, in any of my examples, but if they got something wrong, they used a third color so that they could identify it. When I was teaching up the street, and North Farmington is, is on my uh, right here as I'm sitting in my office, is that when I was there and I was teaching um, algebra for ninth graders, right, students would try, this is factoring, was, was the biggest, the biggest um problem with this is that students would try like a combination of factor pairs it wouldn't work and then they would erase well they would erase and then they'd try something else and then they couldn't remember what they they uh, tried already so they end up trying the same factor pairs over and over again and I had students erase so many times they had a hole in their paper um, it was bad right so if you just change to a different color and say hey this is what the mistake was you're going to identify it and then you're not forgetting what it was mistakes are okay you need to learn from your mistakes though, right? So keeping documentation of that is quite all right. So here I've just got, you know, more examples of those problems. You can see that I wrote down um, not only what it was asking me, but I had a little note about what the transformation was actually doing, right? Um, the graphing, like so many students, especially with, with um, you know, these, they would just write down like what it was going to do, not actually like what the graph did. So... Um, make sure that you're practicing these problems the way that you're practicing for an exam, right? How you do these problems is how it was going to be your result on the exam. So you want to pay close attention to them. So now that you've done some problems from the book, even if your instructor hasn't assigned them that the book always has problems that you can grab, use the online homework to test yourself. So put your notes all away, right? You are just going to try to see, can you do this um, on your own without any notes? And you should try the ones from the book without notes too, but put everything away. Test yourself the way that, and do this the way that you would do on an exam. Now, um, when you're practicing these things and you're saying, oh, Gunkelman, like I really need these solved examples. I need a little bit of help because I'm not going to know how to do this if I, if I don't. Let me give you this. I've got two examples for you. So one is going to be um, how I learn student names. So on the first day of class, I have students make a name tent. I, um, I don't call roll from the front of the room. I come around and I meet my students and I have them say their name to me so that I'm saying it correctly. I learn how to say it correctly. And um, I test myself. 
So it, it might seem weird. So former students, if you've been creeped out about this, I'm sorry. I look at the student. I have to look at the name. I have to say the name and look at the student, okay? So that's how I am trying to, to put in my brain. I'm trying to encode this information, right, of who this is and how I can recognize them. Now, on the second day of class, I pass out the name tags. Now, they're not all that mixed up because I went around and picked them up the day before, and so they're kind of grouped together still in the tables that the people were sitting at, and human nature, people tend to sit in the, in the same spots that they sat before, okay? Okay. Um, when I hand them out, I'm testing myself. I'm saying, you know, are you Dan, right? Are you uh, David? I'm trying to do, I, I, I remember the first letter a lot, but I don't always remember the name. So that's why I'm, I'm using those examples. But that helps me test myself, right? And I go around the room again through the throughout the class and I practice again. I, I practice saying them to myself, you know, can I identify you? Can I do it without looking at the name tag? Can you do a problem without looking at the solved example, right? That's what you're trying to do. All right, if you're like, okay, I don't have to memorize a lot of names, right? Maybe I, it's something else. Everyone's probably learned how to do this though, right? To parallel park. Um, and it can be frustrating. And this is one of the harder things that you have to learn when you are going to get your driver's license, right? So, you know, think about how you learned this, right? Somebody showed you how to do it. They might have tried to coach you through it a little bit when they were sitting in the passenger seat, but you kind of had to practice it, right? You had to learn how to do this. And um, I will never forget teaching my daughter how to parallel park because she got super frustrated with me. And um, I actually got out of the car and said, you need to figure it out, right? Because I have demonstrated for you. I have tried to coach you when you're turning the wheel, what you're looking for when you're getting up to the to the spot, et cetera. And when I got out, it was it was parallel parking with like um, ladder golf, you know, or like bag chairs that were standing up. It wasn't like that she was like between two cars, right? So it was a perfectly safe environment. And you know what? She figured it out, right? She figured it out because she had to go through that process to learn that skill, right? Um, I have this famous quote. I think it's famous um, from uh, Kristen Swanson that the one doing the work is doing the learning. And so when you are trying these problems without solved examples, without videos, without any kind of help from an app, you are the one that is learning the material, right? If you depend on other people, apps, videos, um, you know, notes, et cetera, you're not really learning it. So that's what you got to focus on when you're practicing these problems. So your brain does remember, even when you're testing yourself and you don't quote unquote know something right away, it does help you learn it. There is research that says that. So if you do eventually have to go and get a little bit of help, right, it's okay. Um, just practice a little bit more without the help and get to that point where you can do it on your own. So in this um, series, we've talked a lot about your short-term memory and trying to encode things into your long-term memory, right? So today's video was about that retrieval process, getting it out of your long-term memory, right? Practicing it on your homework so that you can practice it or be, be correct when you bring it forward again on an exam, right? So the more that you practice, that, that neural pathway gets stronger, just like muscles when you go to the gym. So make sure that you are practicing. Um, if you're an OCC student and you'd like to um, come to my orientation session, this is for uh, winter 24 OCC students in math 1150, 1140, uh, 1540, excuse me, 1560, 1580, and 1730. I'm doing two of them. One is on January 11th at 7 p.m. and the other is on Friday, January 12th at 1 p.m. Please use your OCC email address to register and you can go to bit.ly slash meetgunk to register for that Zoom session. If you want to meet with me and you're an OCC student in the winter of 2024 and you're in one of these five classes, 1150, 1540, 1560, 1580, and 1730, um, you can do so. I'm meeting students in person and on Zoom to kind of help them with their their system, what you're, how you're learning your math, not the what, not the, I'm not going to be tutoring. I'm not going to be trying to help you with, with your problems, but I want to talk about how you're learning um, your math. Again, please use your OCC email address to register or to, to sign up and you can go to calendly.com slash jgunk or use the QR code. And I'll put these links in the description below for you as well. Thank you for joining me today for the Math Mastery Series, Navigating Success at Oakland Community College. This video was super important. 
hopefully you got some good tips on how to not only do your homework effectively, to write it, um, but, and to practice, but to do it without solved examples. Have a good day.